But um, but if you were able to see the moon today, uh, this is what you would have seen. It's uh, it's challenging, and if you weren't able to locate this, that's fine. It, this is the waning crescent moon, and um, it's very hard to spot. You have to know exactly where you are looking. Uh, even in a very clear sky, it's really easy to miss this unless you are looking for the moon within the right region of where it is. And uh, what I want you to end this check-in with is what to expect for the next few days, because uh, tomorrow is even going to be harder. And the day after, um, you actually shouldn't be able to see the moon. If you see the moon, then, then I know you are making stuff up. <laughs> so, so let me show you with the simulation uh, what the moon observation will be like for the coming days. So let me just run Stellarium here. So, so I'll, I'll just show you the simulated view of what it, what moon observation would have been like today. So, so today, I need to uh, turn back the clock a little bit to bring the moon back. Okay, so let's say you were out there looking for the moon, three o'clock or so, and you did see the moon, and um, <laughs> and if you saw it, that's what that would have been like. Um, you wouldn't have seen the labels, <laughs> but um, so this uh, field of view of 10 degrees, I think that's already uh, at a bit of a zoom level. Um, yeah, let's see. Yeah, so if I'm at about two feet of distance from my 14 inch screen, then that's about the right angular size for the moon. So, so yeah, when you um, found the moon, that that's uh, what it would have looked like. And the additional challenge that simulation does not show is that you are looking for that view in a sky that looks like this. So it's a uh, very <laughs> easy to miss that unless you are looking in the generally correct direction. So uh, yeah, like imagine, I think the program actually helps you because that whitish spot that's not how one looks. Um, yeah, so so that was today. And um, today I was on 50-50 on whether the moon could have been observed. Uh, now let's just show tomorrow what tomorrow looks like. Uh, I'll, I'll try to keep the moon in the about the same spot. So for tomorrow, let me advance the time a little bit. Uh, this is what it's going to look like. And one of the challenges will be how close the moon will be to the sun. So, <laughs> so not only you are looking for a rather faint thing, uh, you are looking for that very faint thing, not that many degrees away. So here, I think that's maybe about uh, 20 degrees away uh, from a very bright thing. So you'll have to shield your eyes from the sun or you'll have to do something to try to look for this. And my experience the last year was that I couldn't find it. It just, I couldn't locate it. Um, so, so that's where I get the, about five days around the new moon when you can't see the moon. Um, this is not actually new moon. I think this is the day before new moon. So, uh, so if you're somehow able to locate it, um, <laughs> and you have telephoto zoom, take a picture. Um, I'll try to do the same tomorrow. We'll see. Um, so tomorrow is going to be very difficult. It's just, I mean, do give it an attempt. That's uh, actually one of the reasons for this project. I want you to people to get a sense of what real observations are like, some of the difficulties that you have to overcome. And it's hard to get a sense of that on, on, unless you have a first-hand experience. So that's tomorrow. And the day after tomorrow, let me turn back the label on. I think that's, uh, wow, that's uh, still not the new moon. Huh. So, okay. Um, so this might be what it is like. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, that's the moon about, uh, yeah, 10 degrees away from the sun. That is like about uh, hand length from away from the sun. So you are looking for that <laughs> near the sun. And um, I'll make an attempt, but I don't think I'm going to try it that hard, mainly because I don't want to damage my eyes. Again, this is so close to the sun that um, 
that I, <laughs> it, it's going to be difficult. So let's keep going. Um, I thought tomorrow, um, I thought the day after tomorrow was new moon. Let's uh, look at the day after that. Uh, okay, I guess this is new moon. Okay, so uh, three days from now, the, the day after day after tomorrow is going to be new moon. And here, you know, just note that it's new moon. Don't make an attempt because uh, so it, well, it's not solar eclipse. Moon is just missing the sun, um, but there's no way you're going to see it. It's not illuminated at all. And like, yeah, so, I mean, I guess you can make an attempt. I won't stop you, but uh, you won't see the new moon. That's kind of the whole point of that phase. Um, now the day after that, <laughs> uh, so we'll be after that we'll be in the um, uh, waxing phase of the moon, and I think depending on the evening weather, you might even be able to look for the moon after the sun has set. And um, this is still gonna be a bit challenging, I think. So let's see here, July eleventh. Um, okay. And so it, at this point, I think it's a question of weather. I think after the sun sets, when the sky is overall darker, this might be possible to see. Um, even though the same thing on, the, on this side, I would say it's not possible to see. And it's basically gonna be around July 12th, where it's going, going to be now begin to be possible to observe the moon again. So, you know, starting tomorrow, that's what, July 7th through July 12th, um, it, the conditions for moon observation will be difficult. So, um, <laughs> so, um, so during those times, um, I, I leave the, it up to you. I think uh, uh, as the moon is going through the, so it's uh, currently waning, it's going to go through a new moon and then it will become waxing crescent moon. Um, I think you can get enough sense of what it would look like. And um, you can just note that it, what phase you expect it to be and that you attempted the uh, observation and wasn't able to say that's fine. And um, if you want to supplement to that with the simulation, that's also fine, but I, I have mixed feelings about requiring people to uh, requiring people to use a simulation, so you don't necessarily have to refer to simulation. Uh, 